Hello, and welcome back to yoga. My name is Shannon, and I'm so glad that you're here making this time for yourself and spending it with me. Today, we're going to start with a breathing practice, a pranayama. And as always, I just want to remind you to be kind and gentle and sensitive with your body. Check in throughout the practice and make sure you're not pushing past your comfort zone in this moment, which changes day to day and moment to moment. So let your eyes close. Take a deep breath. Let it fall out. And just begin to feel and sense into the current state of your body mind. Feel your body breathe in. Feel your body breathe out. Take one more slow, deep breath, fully expanding your lungs completely letting go of the carbon dioxide. Now we're going to bring attention to the feet. So just feel your connection to the floor through your feet. If you're sitting in a chair, you might feel the bottoms of the feet or your feet on a block or cushion if they don't quite reach the ground. If you're sitting cross-legged, you might be feeling that outside edge of your foot from the pinky toe to the heel. Or you might have one or both legs extended and you might be feeling through the heels and backs of the calves and thighs. So just any part of you that is connected to the mat, to the floor, feel that. This includes feeling our hips and thighs and bottom, even if they're in a chair, feeling from the bottom through the thighs, down through the chair legs and into the floor. Feel your body breathe in, feel your body breathe out. And notice if your mind has taken over and it is starting to think about the feet and think about your connection to the floor. If that's the case, take another deep breath and on your exhale, remind yourself to let go of thinking and to just be in feeling, to experience. Invite the mental chatter to quiet down as you let the feeling part of the body take hold and begin to speak to you. And this part of the body doesn't tend to speak in words, although it may. Try to just feel maybe the arches of the feet perhaps the heels or balls of the feet, the toes and each knuckle in the toes. And you can focus on one specific part if you're feeling pain, like perhaps in the arches or heel. Or you can take time to scan through the foot bit by bit, part by part, feeling the top of the foot, feeling the bone that runs from the big toe to the ankle and going through each toe to the ankle and all the bones in between. I'm just going to take another breath or two here, feeling the feet. And then begin to scan up your feet and feel your ankles. And pause on the ankles for maybe 30 seconds, feeling the front of the ankle, feeling the back of the ankle by the Achilles tendon. Feeling the inner thigh part of the ankle by the big toe and arch side of the foot. And then feeling the outer thigh part of the ankle by the pinky toe, that pinky toe side of your ankle. Take one more breath here and we're going to begin scanning up the calves from the ankle to the knee just very slowly. Feeling your shins, feeling your calves. For lack of better terminology, feeling the inner and outer calves from the ankle to the knee. Go slow and breathe. And you can do them both at the same time or the right one and then the left one, whatever works for you. Once you arrive at the knees, we're going to feel the kneecap, the back of the knee, the inner thigh part of the knee and the outer thigh part of the knee. And take a moment to breathe and sense and feel inside the knee, between the kneecap and the back of the knee, between the inner and outer parts of the knee. 
Notice any difference between the right and left sides of your body. And slowly scan from your knees to your hips and pelvis. Again, one at a time or both together. Just taking time to pause and feel into the inner thighs and breathe into that place and soften as you let go. To feel into your outer thighs. To check in with your hamstrings in the back and your quadriceps in the front. And to feel your hips and pelvis. And begin to turn your palms down, take a deep breath in as you lengthen up hips to head. And on your exhalation, begin to walk yourself forward and down, surrendering into the earth. Breathing out, just going where it's safe. So you may find that your forehead comes all the way to the floor, or you may find more comfort in resting your head on your stacked arms, or on your fists, which can be a little bit higher. You can also adjust the depth of your fold by opening the elbows, which drops the chest down more, or bringing the elbows in a little closer to the midline, which will lift you up a little higher, especially if you push down. And then one more option would be to rest your hands on a block in any way that feels appropriate. One more deep breath into that back side of your body. Let everything go. Start to gently, slowly walk yourself back up. We're going to open up the front side of the body. So if you like, you can support yourself from behind with a block. If you find that you're not quite comfortable with your hands or fists down, drop the knees, lift through the heart, maybe even lift through the chin and breathe. Take one more slow, deep breath here. And when you're ready to come out, come back up to your tall spine. Maybe even sitting on the block for now, if you find that's better for your hips and knees and inner thighs. Inhale, open up shoulder high, and exhale, twist to your right. Right hand behind you, left hand over to the right leg. If you can, inhale, lengthen up. And exhale, gently rotate, but keep both hip bones down. Try not to let one or the other rise up. And again, if you find that you're really rounded in this twist, it's really hard for you to lift, or your knees are up here and you can't drop the knees down, try this block or cushion or pillow under your bottom. And you may find all kinds of length in your spine and opening in the hips and thighs and knees that you didn't think your body could do. So just give it a try, see if it works for you. When you're ready, we'll inhale through center and exhale, twist the other way. Breathe. Take another breath or two here. And then inhale and wind to the front. Exhale, soften, and we're going to find our way onto all fours for some cat and cow curls. On your inhale, lift your head and hips, and on your exhale, round in the cat stretch. Breathe in, let your head and tail rise, let your belly hang. Breathe out, gently push through your hands and knees, hips to the front, chin towards the chest. Let's take two more deep breaths in, slowly and gently shifting the shape of your spine. And out, softly pressing the ground away, feeling the jaw, noticing if your teeth are gritted and softening. Last one. Feel your hands and wrists and fingers. And once again, check in with the feet. Notice what's happening. Notice if the toes are tucked under and the arches of your feet are a little over-engaged. We're going to push back into child's pose and rest. Breathe out. Let your heartbeat slow down. Let your chest and head become heavier and heavier. Allow uh, your elbows and armpits to sink. 
One more slow, deep breath here, knowing you can always support yourself on your arms or fists or block if this is too much pressure for this moment. You can also lift the hips up and slide forward if it's a bit too much in the hips and thighs and ankles. If it's safe, we're gonna walk over to the right, getting a little child's pose with a twist. So you might like to inhale and open up and kind of pull the belly up and in so we can twist around a little bit more. And then when you exhale, let the belly drop into your thighs. Let your forehead and chin drop down towards the floor. Feel into that left arm. Maybe spread all five fingers on the left hand and release both elbows down, but particularly that left one. Both shoulders down, but again, particularly that left armpit. You can always support yourself on the right arm or a block if this is too much. Or a folded up blanket or pillow. One more deep breath into the left side. Surrender. <sighs> Maybe let out a little sigh. Check in with your jaw. We're going to walk gently and slowly through center and off to the other side. So if you like support, just bring it with you. Maybe just bending that left arm and resting your head up near the elbow where the forearm is a little thicker than it is down by the wrist and hand. That might be enough height and support. So see what works. Play with it. Whatever you do, drop the elbows, drop the shoulders. Be mindful not to jam that left shoulder into the left earlobe, even though we're stretching the right side. And feeling that length from the right pinky finger past the right elbow through the right shoulder all the way down the right side of the rib cage, the right side of the waist, and into the right hip and ankle. We still want to be mindful of what's happening in the left side and making sure that we're not tensing up the left shoulder or jaw or left side of the neck. Notice if your breath is suspended. When we suspend our movements, be mindful not to suspend your breathing. Softly come back into center. Pause for one more breath if you can. Let go, centering the arm. We're going to find down dog and walk it out and open up the legs, the calves, the thighs, the knees. So push up and back. Breathe out. Lift your hips. Drop your head. And start to bend one knee as you push into the opposite heel and then switch. Breathe in and out. Out and in. Maybe get a little twist in the hips and the shoulders if that feels safe and comfortable for your body in this moment. <sighs> and then if it's nice, inhale into plank and exhale into down dog. Two more times, inhale plank, exhale down dog. One more deep breath in. And down. Now if you can, right leg up, deep breath in. Exhale, knee into the chest. Bring the right leg to the front. Release the left knee down and tuck your toes. Feel that left hip and thigh. Notice if you have a tendency to spin it up and open, we want to gently drop it down. Breathe out. Imagine you could sink the hip all the way down to the mat. We're not going to, but just imagine that the hip could sink down so much that it went right to the floor. Lift through the head, maybe lift through the throat and chin and forehead and face. Inhale first and on your exhale, slowly walk back to hamstring stretch. So remember you can support yourself here with one or two blocks as you transition from lunge to hamstring stretch. Some of us like having a block under each hand and it just gives us another four to six inches or even um, almost up to nine or so inches depending on which side of the block you use. And then we're gonna come back around and switch. So right knee back, left knee forward, left leg forward. Those of you that like to hop, you're feeling a little feisty, feel free to hop if that's safe and comfortable. So right knee down, left knee stacked over the left ankle, and we want this sensation of the right hip dropping down and into the mat. From the right knee, you want to lift through the right thigh, all the way through that chest and sternum and heart space, 
and then right up through the top of your head. Or if it's safe to lift your chin, that's fine. Just be mindful not to dump the back of your head into the, back, the upper back and shoulder socket. We want this lifting sensation through the chest, through the throat, through the chin, rising up. Inhale first, exhale, rock it back, supporting yourself as you wish. Maybe walking your hands forward away from your hips, dropping your chin and forehead, dropping your elbows and armpits, letting the carbon dioxide escape from your body. One or two more breaths here. Maybe let your head wiggle right and left. And this time we're going to come back into the lunge and find our way into forward fold. So if you like a block, you can use that for support. Tuck the left toes under, deep breath in as you lift up. Exhale, rock back into the ball of the left foot and then step up all at once or in a few steps, whatever's working for your body in this moment. Inhale, stretch up and out. Exhale, fold chin to chest. We're going to take two more. Inhale, lengthen. Feel free to bend the knees if it's too much pull in the back of your legs. Exhale, fold. One more time. Remembering you can also use a chair or a little low table or footstool or ottoman, a little side table, anything you have that's the right length and height for you to reach. In this moment, use that. Because I can tell you, I was so stiff and tight when I started doing yoga, I could not get below my knees. So if that's you, just do what you can and don't worry about the rest. You may have a similar experience or you may have your own experience. Inhale out and up. Exhale, hope into your heart, home to your heart. <laughs> and I was thinking just be mindful and open to the journey to whatever happens without being hung up on a destination. Feel your body breathe in. Feel your body breathe out as you soften head to toe. We're going to start to see if we can inhale the right arm out and up. And on your exhale, start to drop it down the back. So it may come kind of towards the top of the head or back of the head. It might come over near that left shoulder or spine. Or it might start to come all the way over towards the right shoulder blade and kind of right armpit area. So just see where it can go. And then take your left hand, take a deep breath in, and exhale, start to sweep it behind you from the left bottom to the right. And then just again, start to see where it can go. Maybe it just goes down kind of by the left hip, and that's it. Maybe it goes to the right hip, or the right waist, or the right rib cage, or up towards the right armpit. So just see where you can go. Some of us can kind of connect the fingers and hold on. So if that's a yes, feel free. If you find that that's too much and you've got a yoga strap or a, anything of length, a bathrobe tie, a belt, a men's necktie, a strip of fabric, anything will do. And you can just kind of bridge the gap. Alternatively, you can grab your shirt. So just whatever you can do, do that. Breathe in, breathe out. And when you're ready, release all the way out. We're going to catch that strap if you're holding it in the left hand and just pause. Take a breath, move your shoulders forward and up, and back and down. One more deep breath in, and out, and then go the other way. Inhale, back and up, exhale, forward and down. Two more deep breaths. One more deep breath. Mm. Take a moment to pause and check in with your shoulder socket. Feel both sides of the neck and throat. Make sure we didn't overdo something in one side or the other. And if it's a yes, we're going to try the other side. So if you've got a yoga strap, be mindful not to whack yourself in the head with the tie. There's like a either a metal buckle or a plastic buckle at one end. So be mindful not to hit yourself with the buckle. You can hold the buckle end if that works better. But we'll just inhale out and up and exhale, drop it down behind you. And maybe you're just on the top of the head today. Maybe this is where you are with or without your little strap. So do what you can and breathe. And in time, you may find that you can go farther or bridge the gap more. Do what you can. Be mindful not to get what I sometimes call duck butt. <laughs> when your bottom is stuck out, we can put some pressure in the low back here. So if you're feeling some low back pain, lift up through the chest and head, 
Tuck your tailbone under, maybe engage that space below your belly button and see if that helps. Breathe in, breathe out. And when you're ready, we'll release all the way out and down. Take a breath, <sighs> let it go. We'll put the strap down for now. And we're gonna do a little bit of work with balance. So find your balance, front to back, left to right, spread your toes. Take a deep breath, soften. Shift into your left foot, float the right knee up, find your crane. Lift up through the chest and head as if you were a marionette, the little puppet with strings. And imagine a string in your head and chest lifting you up. And also imagine strings on your wrist so that your wrists are up, but your shoulders and elbows are down. Find your head over your heel, feel your shoulders over your hips, and feel all five toes on that left foot. Feel the arch and the calf and the thigh of your standing leg. If it's safe, we're gonna fly. It helps to have your eyes on a drishti point. One still point, something that isn't moving as you breathe in and out. And if you can, deep breath in, we're gonna go for warrior three, reaching front to back. Try to level out your shoulders, level out your hips. Eyes are still on that drishti point. We're gonna come right back into the crane if we can, beautiful. Breathe out and release. Move your standing left ankle, knee, and hip. Check in with your jaw, your forehead. Notice if anything tightened up, if your shoulders are up by your ears. Let it all go. Get water if you need it. Come back into center. Take a breath. Soften, spread your toes. When you're ready, we're gonna to shift to the other side, spreading all five toes on the right foot, bending the left knee, floating up through the chest and head and wrists, gently dropping down through the elbows and shoulders. Feel your face, your jaw, breathe. Feel all five toes on the right foot. Notice if you're peeling them up and flexing the foot or digging them into the ground and squeezing with them. Just try to softly feel that connection. If you wanna fly, you can fly. Where is your gaze? How is your breathing? Practice softening and letting go. Inhale first if you can, exhale warrior three. Reach, reach, reach and breathe. One more deep breath, reach through your fingers, reach through your toes or heel, this helps, I promise. We're gonna take it back up knowing that if it's too much, you can always drag the big toe down, let it stabilize you. Take a breath in, crane, shoulders down. Soft forehead, face, and jaw. Exhale, release. And we're going to move that standing right ankle, knee, and hip. Feel into your forehead, face, jaw, throat, shoulders, upper back, low belly, low back, hips. <sighs> we're going to take a swinging twist. So take your feet somewhere between hip and mat width apart. Take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, start to lift the left heel, rock to the right, and then lift the right heel and rock to the left. Breathe out as you twist. And we're gonna try a little forceful exhalation from the belly, below the belly button, a ha sound. So, ha, ha. It's like you're trying to use that ha to push all the breath from below your belly button out and empty all the carbon dioxide out of your lungs. Ha, 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 ha. Let your arms fly. If you get dizzy, stop. And we're gonna start to slow down. So always checking in with your body. If that's too much, you get dizzy, go slower, or do every other one, or stop. We're gonna find our way into center, heel, toe, step, or hop. Take a deep breath, let it go. We're gonna work our dancer today, Natarajanasana. So find your balance again, shift into your left foot, spread all five toes, make sure they're pointing forward, not out or in, knees and hips and ankles are all in alignment. Bend your right knee, catch the top of your right foot. Left hand reaches up, right knee is pointing down. Eyes on your still point. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. Feel your face, feel your feet, feel your hands. Inhale to prepare, exhale, hinge at your hips. Engage that space below the navel if you can. Push the top of the right foot into the right hand and keep that connection. Feel your right knee. Breathe. Maybe one more deep breath if you can, and when you're ready to come out, feel your connection to the floor. Keep that connection between the right hand and foot, and then release. 
Move your left ankle, knee, and hip. Breathe out. Soften your shoulders. And when you're ready, we'll find the other side. Find center. Let go of your breath. Lengthen from the ground up, heels to head. Engage that lower belly if you can. Left hand up, I'm sorry, right hand up, left knee down. Find your grip. So some of us prefer this kind of outer grip with the palm in so that we're on the pinky toe and outside edge of the foot. Some of us prefer this kind of underhand grip, palm up, so we're on the big toe and arch side of the foot. So see what's good. Hinge at the hips, feel your shoulder, maybe try it both ways, see what feels better. Just be mindful if you go overhand, try not to lift the knee up and out. <laughs> One more deep breath in, and we're gonna keep that connection between the foot and hand as we come up and out. And release, let it go. So see, sometimes when I'm showing you what not to do, <laughs> it throws me off, because that's what we, it throws us off. <laughs> Wiggle that right ankle, knee, and foot. Move your hips a little bit. I just like to point out little things that you might be struggling with, little things that I might have struggled with, but sometimes those little things are just all you need and the light bulb turns on and you go, oh, I get it now. So if you can, come to the front of your mat, take a deep breath out and up. Exhale right into forward fold. We're gonna take our half lift on the inhale, lengthening hips to head. And exhale, we're going to fold chin to chest and then start to bend your knees, connect the rib cage and thighs, sink the hips, lift the head, find your low squat. Breathe. Fingers can stay down or you can switch onto your block or wall or chair for support. Maybe just one hand on something, maybe one hand on each thing. If it's safe, you can come to your heart. If it's safe, you can bring hands to your third eye, center of the forehead, in between the eyes. Maybe even close the eyes. Be mindful of your own personal edge and safety. Feel your jaw and shoulders. We're going to see if we can drop through the hips, lift through the fingertips, and bring the bottom all the way down. Of course, if this is too much, find your own way there, supporting yourself as needed. Walk your feet out. Take a deep breath in. Reach up. And exhale. Rock halfway back. And how lengthen up through your chest, head, and fingertips. Exhale, rock all the way down, vertebra by vertebra. Noticing if you're going to the left or to the right, just finding the center the whole way down. Once you get there, stretch out fingertips to heels, reach, reach, reach. Exhale, hug the right leg into your chest and squeeze. Take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, push up through the right heel. Hold what you can reach. So some of us can reach the big toe. Some of us can reach that outside edge of the foot. Some of us want to go for the calf or the thigh. This can be a great place for the block. I'm sorry, the strap. I know the knee seems very convenient. Most of us feel like we can reach that knee, but please try not to put pressure on your knee. Knees can be one of the weak points in the body, especially as we get older. And so we want to be Mindful of our body and take good care of it so that it lasts us a lifetime. I tell you, I have some yoga teacher friends that are in their 60s and 80s, and they are amazing. They have abs and they're in bikinis, <laughs> but they exercise their bodies, they work their minds, and they eat healthy, they get proper rest on a good mattress, and all those things pay off. We're switching to the left side now, so if you haven't switched, switch over. Drop your shoulders away from your ears. Roll them gently down your back towards your hips. Feel your body breathe in. Feel your body breathe out. Soften and relax a little bit more with each exhalation. Feel what there is to feel in your body in this moment. Watch like a dispassionate observer without trying to jump onto the train of thought. And allow what is to be without trying to force or change it in this moment. This doesn't mean we can't make changes. It just means we accept what is now and then we decide what's next with discernment. When you're ready, release all the way out. 
And we're going to find our way into reclined cobbler's pose. So if you can, knees up. Take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, begin to heel toe your feet together. Drop the knees open. Turn your palms up and roll your shoulders down. We'll pause here for five to ten slow, deep breaths if this is safe. If it's not, some options would be to get two blocks or two pillows or fold up two blankets to the same kind of height and put them under your hips. You generally want to use two so that we don't unbalance the pelvis by only propping one up. That can cause problems. Another choice that you could experiment with would be to slide your feet a little farther away from your hips and pelvis. Sometimes that decreases the pressure on the inner thigh. And yet a third choice would be to cross, so you're more Indian style or crisscross applesauce than um, cobbler's pose. And this just gives us a little support. So the right foot is under the left calf and the left foot is under the right calf. And even though the angle of my hips are not that much more lifted, my knees are not that much more lifted, I'm getting support. And that support allows me to relax. So many times we think we'll just power through, we'll just do it a thousand times, and we'll just make our body succumb. And that can happen. But you know, interestingly, the body opens much more quickly. If progress, quote unquote progress, is what we're after, we'll often make progress much more quickly by supporting ourselves by giving ourselves what we need, instead of kind of punishing our way through by supporting ourselves and lifting ourselves up, then we have what we need to make that quote unquote progress that we're trying to make. Take one more slow deep breath and on your exhalation remind yourself it is about the journey, it is not about the destination. There is no there to get to. Enlightenment does not magically come when you put your foot behind your head or get into a headstand or a full lotus. Begin to lengthen your legs out and stretch fingers to heels. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, open up like your little sand angel. Toes open, palms up, shoulders down. If there's anything else your body needs before the end of class, maybe a twist to each side or a little circling the knees to open up your low back, make time and space for that. Maybe take another deep breath and sigh it out. <sighs> now begin to let your thoughts turn in inward. Let your attention turn inward as the thought stream quiets down. We're gonna take a scan from the top of the head to the tips of your fingers and toes. And as you do so, imagine that there was honey or molasses, something that was thick and slowly dripping from the top of your head all the way down your body, carrying a wave of relaxation with it. Letting your body breathe freely and easily. Surrendering a little bit more with each exhalation. If you're the kind of person that gets a little bit panicky or nervous, then just imagine that whatever is dripping down is free of your eyes, free of your nose, free of your mouth. This is a pleasant, relaxing sensation. It brings a little bit of warmth it brings a little bit of joy. And this is an intuitive experience. So whatever is dripping from your head to your fingers and toes knows where you need a little bit more. It knows to pause around your forehead or your jaw and throat or maybe your chest and upper back, the belly, the wrists the ankles, the knees, the pelvis. Wherever you need a little more nourishment, a little more healing, this energy pauses there. Perhaps it circulates and fills the space. Just bringing exactly what you need. Some of us prefer to visualize a light, like a white light or a blue light washing through you. So just imagine this energy, this sensation flowing from your head to your fingers and toes, relaxing, replenishing, 
nourishing, healing. Feel your body breathe in. And with each exhale, let go a little bit more. Surrendering into the safety of your mat. Into your own unique safe place. Turn your attention to the present moment. Take a deep breath and let it all go. <sighs> and maybe slowly and gently begin to move your fingers and your toes. Just the tiniest bit at first, and then maybe a little bit more as it's safe and comfortable. If you start to move and you feel like your body's not quite ready yet, fall back into your Shavasana and give yourself a little bit more rest and healing and replenishment. If you like moving the head side to side and stretching and rolling over, you can. We're all different, so some of us enjoy sinking deeper and deeper into the stillness, and some of us it's just not what we're feeling in this moment or we've had enough. So tune into your body, give yourself what you need. Breathe and surrender. And if you're ready to come to seated, you can. Of course, if you were ready a little while ago, don't wait for me. Alternatively, you can take Shavasana with your head on a pillow or block or blanket if you get dizzy or uncomfortable lying flat. You could bend the knees or sit up with your back against the wall or in a chair. Feel your body breathe in. Feel your body breathe out. We're going to check in with the feet again. Feeling our connection to the earth through the pinky toe side, or the soles, or the heels, or all of the above. Live in the heart space and shoulder socket with breath, and let the shoulders drop down away from your ears on your exhalation. Begin to spread all ten fingers as you inhale out and up, lifting from hips to head, receiving all that there is with gratitude and grace. And on your exhalation, as you come home to your heart, ask for clarity in your mind, clarity in your speech, and clarity in your heart. Remind yourself that you're human, you're not a robot. And despite our best efforts, we will fail, we will make mistakes, we will do things that we shouldn't do. And when we do, we do the right thing, we apologize, we take responsibility, we make it up. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Peace to you, your loved ones, and our beautiful earth. The light within me bows before the light within you.
practice together again soon. And remember, life is so beautiful on the mat. Let's keep it the same way off the mat. Thank you for coming and have a fabulous day and like